on their own accounts and in turn sell to their customers. And of course, you saw about the fact that uh, banks, on, on that caption, that banks are now to uh, remit in Naira their, their transactions that was formerly dollarized. Well, let's move this topic further and really analyze this issue. And to look at this with me is uh, CEO of Global Analytics, uh, financial expert and economist, economic analyst too, is Tokwe Faswa. Tokwe, yeah, welcome to Thank Global you. Business again. Cheers. Now, let's look at this issue, dollarization of the economy. What's your own general view of it? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, in general, I mean, it means uh, reliance on uh, dollar to for 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 economic transactions in in a country. Uh, the general view is, uh, you know, I must say, well, it's not only Nigeria. Um, a lot of countries in Africa, uh, you know, very much dollarized. You move from from Ghana to Kenya to. Uh, to Uganda, to all these other places, you know. So it's not just a Nigerian phenomenon. Uh, the, the, the real issue there then becomes, uh, you know, is the fact that people repose a lot of, a lot of confidence in, in the dollar as a, as a dominant world currency and, of course, as, as a reserve currency itself. Um, however, the, 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 the way to also look at it from an economic point of view is that the, 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 more, the, the less productive an economy is, the less diversified an economy is, the more the tendency of such an economy relying on the dollar. The more troubled an economy is, you know, that, that, that means the less confidence, you know, whether foreigners or uh, uh, inhabitants of a country will have in the currency that the country is floating or backing and then, you know, can generally resolve to, to, to the dollar, to resort to the dollar. Um, in Zimbabwe recently, remember when they had this, you know, trillion percent uh, inflation? Uh, you know, we, we don't hear that much about what happened uh, in Zimbabwe anymore because what uh, Mugabe had to do is actually to adopt the dollar. So if you went to Zimbabwe today, all they spend there is the dollar. But and that's uh, Zimbabwean dollar. Uh, no, no, no. The U.S. dollar is what they spend because they, they had to, they, they couldn't keep up with, um, you know, uh, maintaining the, uh, uh, their own currency and they had to let go of their currency and adopt the, the U.S. dollar, which some would say was a smart move by, by Mugabe because, I mean, uh, to a large extent, there was no way they could. So I'm saying that the more trouble an economy is, the more the, 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 the idea of, you yeah. know, of relying on the dollar for economic transaction gains ground. So you are uh, saying now that the, the fact that Nigerian economy is becoming dollarized signifies that there yes, is a uh, lot of trouble in the economy. Invariably, invariably uh, and according to, of course, you heard the people in the central bank uh, just mentioned uh, that that fact to the to a large extent. Uh, it 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 is a, is a signification of of a certain level of uh, uncertainty in the system. Whether it's temporary or permanent or a long term thing is a different ballgame altogether. Um, uh, you know this this instance it has been attributed to. Uh, you know, the upcoming political, uh, uh, the, you know, political uh, uh, events that are coming up maybe anytime from next year into 2015. Uh, people are taking positions, monies are moving. Some, some you know, I mean, you hear uh, the, the, the policies that have been brought uh, up of recent, you know, there's the one that has to do with importation of dollar. And then there's the one that has to do with moving out of dollar, which yes. is exportation, exportation of, of dollar. dollar. So yes. both the export and import, there's a whole lot of traffic going on. But the more concern is on the ones that are going out of the economy. Because, of course, if money was coming in, the, the point is that uh, the w it becomes an issue where a lot of transactions, it's a growing percentage of transactions in the country, whether you're talking about real estate, whether you're talking about retail itself, whether you're talking about in the banking sector, is becoming denominated in dollar. And, you know, you can actually begin to break it down. One of the things I think it may be happening, really, is that, you know, the more we're going towards this e-payment and cashless society, uh, there's a tendency for people who still want to hold cash to, to move on to, to the other currency. Dollar. I was actually coming so to th that th point. Th that, that's an aspect that the central bank needs to look at. Of course, we're not going to go back on the, on the cashless policy. Uh, today, in Abuja and a few other states, uh, we have now moved to, to what Lagos was. was. And the penalties are taking effect. Yeah, people are getting used to it, really. And I think it's a very good policy for the country. But of course, it's going to put pressure on the dollar end for those who still need to uh, you know, hold cash. Uh, and of course, 
there, there are many reasons for people to hold cash. You know, of course, there's the issue of corruption. Like, you, you heard a girl there talking about how they bribed some people. Yes. So, I mean, that's at the very small, small level. level. But as you begin to graduate further. And um, so the money is graduate. The money is graduate as well. And, you know, a lot of money will be moved in, in dollars. So, of course, the central bank is doing its own job. Um, I think what is very, very important, I mean, for example, there's also this cultural aspect. Um, I remember there was a time when some of our banks wanted to do uh, GDRs. Uh, that's a global depository receipt. Mm. And uh, the, 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 the people were moving around and they were marketing these GDRs. And one of the key marketing points was that, look, this certificate is in dollars. And people actually bought them because they were in dollars. dollars. Because somewhere at the back of our minds, we actually don't have a lot of confidence in our currency. We believe that anything dollar denominated or foreign currency denominated is always better than ours. And many times we, we can be wrong because, of course, the dollar gets devalued as well. Uh, equally for every other global currency, they have issues from time to time. You know, but at, at that time, you know, we, we actually, uh, people actually, you know, believe that uh, there's this cultural effect in terms of, you know, believing that the dollar is always going to be better than ours. Of course, the U.S. economy, one could say, arguably, is better managed than ours. The U.S. is sitting on top of the world. They have a lot of influence everywhere, you know. I mean, even though they there's are a the shutdown only, now. <laughs> there's a, even though there's a shutdown, you know, but, you know, the only, that, that's the only currency that you can print and spend. Major currency, of course, they could do that in China as well. Uh, but if the United States owes you, at the end of the day, all said and done, you know, if you put them under too much pressure, they can print the dollar and pay you. You can't print the euro and pay like that because in order, in order to print the euro and spend, you need to get all the consensus of all the members yeah. of the, the states that EU. use this euro and all that stuff, you know. And so, therefore, you know, of course, that has even allowed the, the, the United States to over leverage itself in terms of borrowing from, from people. And that's another factor that we are having. Part of the reasons why we're seeing a lot of this uh, movement is that there was a time in the recent, in the recent past where uh, Nigeria was actually raising a lot of money in terms of uh, borrowing, you know, using the bond market and so on. And when you're borrowing, you know, that's an avenue by which you're inviting foreign currency into your country. Uh, because it's clear, it's in very simple economic terms, uh, the, the one of the, the, the key way to stabilize your currency is to get you know, other currencies to demand your currency. Yeah. I always tell people that, look, a currency that chases other currencies will be tired. Okay, so we, we, one of the problems we have in Nigeria is that because we're an import-intensive economy, mm -hmm. the Naira is always chasing other currencies. currencies. If you go into the banks today, you know, all the f import forms that they are issuing, even all the export forms are denominated in and other currencies. Yes. So uh, you would never see an, an export form where demand, the exporter from Nigeria demands that Naira be paid. No, it will never take Naira, even if is going to lose on dollar exchange rate, he would always prefer the dollar. And I think uh, there's a need for financial education in this area more and more. Okay, you know? let's, so let's, look, let, let's look at the, the bit of an accusation that even in government cycles, dollar is spent more than the Naira. And so where, uh, what is the justification of telling ordinary Nigerians to begin to go to the Naira when within government cycles they spend more dollar than Naira? Well, okay, fine. I, I may not be able to answer that because um, I'm not a government uh, uh, you know, employee as well. I don't know how they operate. Uh, of course, it's, if, if that's the case, that's really, really, uh, that's not a very uh, good development. It's not a very good development. I was going to also say that if you look at the retail sector, there was a time that the central bank brought out a policy and said, guys, uh, you know, don't take any money, don't pay any money in dollars, don't take any money. But you find out that school fees are paid in dollars in Nigeria. Yes. You know, um, there are many shops today that, you know, in, in all these high-end malls that even some of the things, the price is only in dollars. There are, there are some communities in Nigeria today, the high-profile communities where all they recognize is, is dollars and so on and so forth. So what have we been able to do about this? You know, it's our country uh, and, you know, there's a need for us to, to be uh, very concerned about these issues. So I was going to say that, um, you know, uh, but there's another factor, you know, that, that, that no matter what, what a currency we want to depend on, uh, every currency is subject to devaluation from time to time. In the recent past, we found out that the, uh, the uh, currencies of, uh, of, of South Africa, the RAND, the Indian rupee, uh, the Brazilian real, the, you know, uh, the Malaysia rupee, and a few other of these emerging economies have actually suffered a lot of uh, uh, devaluation. And why? 
uh, it was because just as is, I think is happening in the case of Nigeria today, uh, there was a time that those economies were darlings, you know. Uh, when the rest of Europe and America went into a slump, investors moved into these economies. Now, when, when for currencies move into those economies, their econo that's, that currency will be stronger. Nigeria has enjoyed a lot of, uh, you know, the Naira has enjoyed a fair level of stability yeah. in the last few years because, yeah. partly because of these investors who moved into our bond market, into the federal government bond market. Now, the, it seems as if those investors are a bit jittery, perhaps because of the politics that's going on. You have to, you know, and, you know, this is what they call it hot money at times, you know, but the bottom line is you cannot stop these investors when they say they want to leave. And when they want to leave, they're going to demand for foreign currency. So perhaps that's another factor for us to look at. And that's going to be a major, major factor. Because a lot of them have invested in some of what we report as our local debt. Mm. You know, today that they'll tell you that Nigeria has about 40 billion or so, or 44 billion of local debt in dollars. Mm. And of course, about uh, 6, 7, 8 billion uh, foreign, foreign debt. But the point is that most of our local debt is held by foreigners who may leave at any point in time. And of course, this will, and they demand, demand, for, their they demand for their money in, in foreign, foreign currency. currency. Now, when you match that 40, 44 billion here, 7 billion, and about 51 billion of debt in dollars that we're, we're owing, Vis-a-vis -vis our reserves, that's at about 46, 46 yeah. thereabout now it has reduced. You find out that we, we actually don't, perhaps may not have that amount of money to back this up. One of the things that the investors look at when they're coming is, oh, how much of reserves do they have? Oh, okay, if we want to take off, they're going to be able to back us up. You know, so that's the reason why the central bank is uh, perhaps raising the alarm. Mm. There are so many other factors to consider. Okay, now let's look at where do we go? Do we start from the fact that we begin to reorientate Nigerians? Certainly. Certainly. I mean, you kind of hit the, the, the nail on the head, you know. And, uh, you know, I mean, in fact, for me, I say there are two uh, approaches, you know. Uh, the first is to look, you may look at the, lo the short term, you may look at the long term. Short term is that there are times when you have to take draconian decisions. Like the central bank today has said, look, guys, you know, all this idea of, we are uh, wholesale uh, Dutch auction system is over, you know, for now, you know. Uh, and then we're not back to the retail Dutch, Dutch auction system. This is a scenario where every customer that wants to buy this money, fills the form, be, must, you fill and, the form, and, and the and bank will list you out and say this is what they want to buy. The total is what they get if they get everything from the central bank, you know. But he, as, as he, the, the, the former thing that used to, regime that used to obtain was a scenario where the central bank will sell money to these banks and give them a certain margin that they can play with. And now, the banks now use now their discretion said, to, exactly, to distribute. Now they say there's no more of those those discretion at least for now let us observe so there are times when you have to take some draconian decisions uh so i think we have got to that point now we must not deceive ourselves um you know we did what actually is a, a food is that the the the, the 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 economy actually is uh it doesn't have much in terms of uh you know uh, leg on the ground uh, i dare say you know uh, there's a need not only to reorientate nigerians but to reorientate the economy uh the, 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 you see if you the, the only reason okay we should be thinking to ourselves now what would what what killer app is Nigeria going to come up with that's going to get money pouring into this economy? Now I'll let you uh, know get a, a little bit of analysis here. Uh, you see what happened in Kenya. You know, of course, the, the bombing that happened in Kenya. And you know, the point is that uh, you know, to, to Kenya has discovered oil as well. Mm. Uganda has discovered oil. Liberia, Ghana, a lot of those countries. Discovering of crude oil is not a big deal anymore. Uh, but when I was looking at a certain news report over the, uh, yesterday or so uh, about the, the, the medium term, uh, you know, framework, expenditure framework, uh, there's some dispute on it, you know, that, yeah. they, that you know, the House of Representatives and co, they are arguing about it with the Ministry of Finance. And I could see that the issue was still about the benchmark of the price of crude. Yeah. Uh, I think it's still $74 somewhere. And I'm thinking, okay, even in the medium to long term, we're still talking about this crude, which everybody is, you know, everybody now has. What is going to be, suppose there's a downward trend in the price of crude. Which, which we're we expecting be? because exactly. uh, 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 the budget office just said two days ago that if uh, Nigeria is going to first cut its budget next year over like 300 billion, and it's going to be worse off if oil goes as low as $86. Exactly. Now, that, that, that's 86 What? But, you know, it could, it could, what if it was even less than that? So, now, but I mean, there's going to be crisis exactly. at 86 but mind you, now, mind you, so we're saying that, okay, if we're saying that all the, all the money we're expecting in Nigeria, 
okay, in, in tomorrow, next year, the year after, and so on, is largely going to be crude oil money coming to, into this economy. Uh, then we, it, it, it's an economy that's actually yeah, that's a single factor that can swing the economy in different yeah. directions. Yeah. Now, if you look at Kenya, they have the crude now, like Ghana. But uh, however, in spite of what has happened in some of these countries, what they have is what I call the non-debt inflows that goes into those countries. A, a place like Kenya, no matter what anybody does to Kenya, okay, the, 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 the tourists will forever be going into Kenya. I mean, yeah. when I was in the UK, I, I, you know, I knew so many people, you know, Europeans who would, who would go to Kenya for their vacation every year. Nobody comes to Nigeria out of their free will, except you're in Nigeria. For your vacation, why would you, where, what, where, where is that to go? But, and then why is this so? Because right in Nairobi City, Inside Nairobi City, there's a huge game park there that could interest people. They don't go there to go and see Westgate Mall, okay? They go there to go and see this game reserves. They go there to go and see, you know, the forest and what have you. The same thing in Uganda. A country like Uganda would actually tell you, even in Nigeria, when I wanted to get their visa from here, they made it mandatory that we have to book through a tourist company. You can see how they even create business for tourist for companies. Tourism. So therefore, whether you're staying one day or two days in Uganda, you, you have no choice. But to, uh, exactly. To, to so in fact, what you're doing is you're actually getting to know the country. Even if all you can do is a tour of Kampala, they take you to the parliament of Kampala, a few this and that. And you can see how money comes into a country. Now, the problem we have here is that we, we, there's nothing else we're selling. And, you know, uh, you know, we say we're very proud people, but I say that, you know, you cannot continue to say you're proud. You can stay in your village. You have to go to school. You have to build yourself up. You have to, you know, you have to go to school. You have to work hard at what you know. You have to learn a skill. You have to build yourself up in order to emerge. As a, so we, there's a need to rethink about the economy. This economy, we haven't actually started. And indeed, I must tell you, Nigeria is an open system. Today now, we're celebrating the... Um, you know, influx of, 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 you know, all these large supermarkets, uh, shop rights and what have you, into different cities in the, in, the, in the country. If you went into any of them, perhaps 99.9% .9 of what they sell are made up, made, made made abroad. abroad yeah. You know, so it's, it's madness. I mean, so the same uh, pineapple, uh, you, somebody in China decides to add value.